Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Yoga for Everybody. My name is Skyla Ramirez. Let's begin with some mindful breathing today. You might want to lie down on your back with the knees bent or come into any easy seated position. I recommend that you have a pillow for this practice so you're able to provide some comfort to the body. Put the pillow behind your head, your neck, and the tops of the shoulders. You might also want to have a pillow or a blanket rolled up under your knees if you're choosing to stretch the legs out. From seated, we may want to sit on a yoga mat, a pillow, or a bolster, elevating the hips. That can relieve tension in the low back and in the hip and pelvis area. Now, from wherever you are, just know that through the duration of the practice, you can move anytime you want. And you're always going to notice any comforts or discomforts in your body, and then make choices in the practice based on moving towards comfort. Um, as you notice various distracting sensations, is that sensation a muscle that might be tensing or is it a muscle working? Is it possible that you had breakfast this morning and maybe there's discomfort because there's food moving through the digestive tract? So as you notice various distracting sensations, Notice, is this something that maybe is harmful to me, or is this something that is just a discomfort to move through? And of course, if you determine that any sensation feels harmful or hurtful to your body, move away from that sensation, move towards comfort in the practice. Let's bring our hands onto the stomach, or maybe even one hand over the chest, and let's on the exhale, gently press either into your chest or into your belly, press in with the palms of the hands. Inhale, feel the breath expanding in the chest and the belly at the same time, big inhale. And then exhale, gentle amount of pressure into the chest and belly. So we're noticing the rise and fall of the abdomen with every inhale and every exhale, inhale belly and heart expansion. So it's a full lung inflation. And then exhale, gently pressing into those spaces, encouraging the body to fully let go, fully release the breath. Let's try this maybe three to five more times quietly. And notice if your brain is busy, just notice if it's busy. And in those three to five breaths, when we are observing some quiet time, if your brain is chatty, remind yourself, this is about the body. What is going on in my body? And just keep bringing it back to noticing your body. Let's try that for three to five breaths. Notice the body, big inhale. From this place of intent awareness, take your hands out beside you and let's just let the head turn left and right, whether you're seated or lying on the floor. Bring the head to any neutral position and gently tuck the chin in and then gently lift the chin. So if we're lying on the floor, we are weight bearing the head into the floor. So that little tilt of the chin in and up may only be a millimeter or two of movement. It's a micro movement to get the muscles to sort of slide along your back spine and neckline. Just a little bit goes a long way with this. Let's come to a still point with the chin feeling that the chin is down just a little bit, just enough so that if you had an egg balancing on the top of your head, it would topple over and roll off. So it's just a gentle, conservative tilt of that chin and head from wherever you are. 
Let's turn those palms up and you might have the arms sliding along the floor. Let's inhale, sweeping the arms up, maybe just a little higher than the shoulders, bend the elbows, bring the fingertips towards your head, and then exhale, let those arms stretch out and lower the arms down beside you. Inhaling, sweeping or grazing along the floor or through space, stopping when the hands are just a little higher than the shoulders, bend from the elbow, bring the fingertips towards the head and the ears, and then take those hands out, stretch it out as you exhale, and slowly come down. The movement, for those of you that maybe are lying on the floor right now, it's really reminiscent of making a snow angel. I don't know about y'all, but I am ready for some cooler days, definitely. I'm glad we got that this morning. Let's try this just a couple more times. Inhale, sweeping, pausing, stillness through the shoulders, hinging through the elbows, spreading out the fingertips, exhaling down. Maybe just one more like that. Big inhale, sweep, bend the elbows, exhale, reach out and lower down. For those of us who are seated, let's take our time and transition into lying on the floor. We might want to roll over onto one side and then from side lying, rolling over onto our backs. From lying on our backs, let's draw one knee in at a time towards the chest and hold on just behind your thighs. Let's give the knees a little shake, give the feet a little shake. From here, you can straighten the legs up. So we're introducing the stretches to the body, stretches that could bring tension into the hips and the back, introducing those stretches with as little weight bearing as possible. Let's roll out the ankles, not only improving overall range of motion, but Hopefully also improving circulation. So moving from these hot summer days, we're transitioning into fall. Fall is considered a drier season and we're doing lots of movements to promote circulation of fluids through the body. So keeping the body lubricated during these drier months that are coming up. From here, let's slowly bend the knees in, take the hands behind the legs again and open the knees as wide as your shoulders, or even as wide as the armpits. From here, let's let the body rock gently side to side, like a playful infant. This is our expression of a happy baby rocking side to side, swiveling just slightly at the waist. You can make this movement a little bigger through the hips and start stretching the muscles that can tense up around your spine and low back. We're gonna stretch those hip muscles slightly away from the low back. Add in a breath where you exhale on your twist, inhale through center, exhale twist, and allow the movement to take its own shape with the body. So the body might start to stretch out in different ways in what we call an organic way. Think about what does organic mean? What is organic movement? It's just letting something be, letting it, you know, organic, organic fruits and vegetables, just letting them grow towards the light. Don't mess with it. So what happens when your body moves in an organic way? If you take the mind out of it and just move in any way that the body feels natural. How does this movement maybe change or progress? Maybe your hands want to come away from the body with the happy baby. Maybe you keep your hands on your belly. Let's rock a few more times side to side. And again, keep the movement organic. From here, let's come to a still point Take the feet out to hips width. So we wanna see the knees at the width of the bones of the pelvis. Let's lower our feet down to the floor. Inhale, bring the arms up overhead and maybe reach back as far as the shoulders permit. 
Maybe we have the backs of the hands or the knuckles touching the floor. If you're noticing any pain in the shoulders, bend the elbows in close to the trunk of your body. And you could always hover the hands up so that your elbows stay grounded, less pressure on the shoulders. Let's exhale, lower the hands down beside you. Inhale, lift the hips into bridge. Exhale, lower the hips. Inhale, lift the arms. Again, you can keep the elbows close. You can straighten them out. Exhale, lower the arms. Inhale, lifting the hips. Exhale, lower. Inhale, arms, continuing to alternate. Exhale, arms. Inhaling, hips. Exhaling, hips. One more time. Inhale, arms, coordinating upper body and lower body with breath. Through the hips, inhale and exhale. Now let's try both together. Press the palms down into the floor. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, lower the hips, lift the arms and reach back. So let's coordinate this just a little differently with the breath. Inhale, hips up, arms down, pushing down into the floor, maybe getting a higher lift in those hips. Exhale, hips down, arms overhead. We'll try this at least a couple more times to work on some coordination. Inhale, lift, palm press, exhale down. Last one, inhale, lift, palms press, exhale down. Let's let the hips rest, bring the hands out to the side, palms facing up. From here, stretching out your right leg all the way straight on the floor. Let's flex through that right foot. So a flexed foot is a flat foot. So we're stretching that foot out, keeping it flat foot flexed or pushing through the heel as much as possible on the floor. From here, turn from your hip joint, turn that foot left and right. Now, if there's any pain in this, bend your right knee and feel as if you're turning again, just from the hip joint, just from that leg bone to make the foot go left and right. We initiate that movement just with the deep, deep hip muscles here. So imagine you're trying to maybe turn a doorknob. <laughs> it would be a low doorknob, but you push into that doorknob with your heel and you're trying to turn it to the right and then drag it through center and turn it a little bit left. Naturally, we have more external rotation than internal. So you're gonna be opening up the door or turning to the right a lot more than turning to the left. Let's try a couple more. When you're ready, come to center, slowly drag that leg in. Let's extend that left leg, flat foot, push through the heel, lowering the leg down. Take a moment, maybe rock a little bit on the hips. Let's feel that the low back is comfortable before we initiate those movements with the foot. And as we check in with the back for comfort, if it's uncomfortable, bend that knee. Still pushing through the heel, let's take that foot out to the side, out to the left, rotate the hip out, and then through center, tiny rotation in. So we're just going out and in. And it might feel at first that we're moving with the foot. However, over time, we're drawing awareness up deep into the hip joint so that the movement really is only coming from the hip. They call it a kinetic or an energy chain. So the energy is initiated with that hip joint and then it travels down to your knee and foot. Take it out and in. And maybe notice, notice any subtle sensations that might come up with the rotation. Does it feel more comfortable to rotate out 
Is there a point where it gets uncomfortable? Bring it to center, rotate it in. Notice the difference in the range of motion. Remembering that rotating out usually is more movement than rotating in. Let's do it just a couple more times. This is one of those micro movements where we may not feel much going on when we do it, but the hips might come to visit you later in the day. <laughs> it's one of those where there might be a delay in soreness. Let's come to a still point, drag that foot in, let the knee sway a little bit left and right. Let's all take our time and roll over onto one side, bring the hands in close, and let's breathe into our backs. So gently stretching the muscles that lie along the sides of the spine. We're allowing the lungs to expand and contract, allowing that movement of the lung to gently stretch the, the delicate muscles around your spine. Breathe into the low back, the middle back, breathe into the upper back. And when you're ready, exhale, soften your heart, your ribs, your low back and belly. Inhaling low back, middle back, upper back, exhaling, shoulders, ribs, belly. Consider breathing into the side of the rib as well. So no matter where you're lying down, whatever your top arm and top side body is, breathe into that top hip, into the rib, breathe under the armpit, and then exhale, soften. Let's try that a couple more times. Inhaling into the side lung, One more. When you're ready, use the top arm. Let's gently bring ourselves up into seated. And let's come into what we call a foundation pose, seated staff. So let's sit with the legs stretched out, lengthened out as much as possible in front of the body. And again, we may want to put a blanket or a pillow under the hips. This will tilt your hips back or the pelvis will tilt to take pressure out of your back. If you're noticing pain in your back, another thing you can try is putting a blanket or pillow under your knees in this foundation pose. We're pushing through the heels. We've already practiced this pushing through the heel with a flat foot with the body. So we're going to build on that stretch through the legs and the low back. Let's inhale, bring the arms up and overhead, sitting nice and tall, lengthening through the spine. Maybe even imagine that there is a, a clean line that moves from your tailbone up the spine through the crown of the head. And there's this energy that is lengthening or pulling up towards the sky. Exhale, sweep the arms down. Let's walk the hands down the legs and think of trying to Stretch your chin, your throat, your heart and collarbones. Try to pull them slightly up, shearing over the kneecaps. So there's this energy <clears throat> of the belly moving forward and down. And then there's another energy of the heart. <clears throat> there's the energy of the heart moving forward and up. So all energies of the spine and the trunk of the body are moving forward, energizing the body for the day. We have this forward moving action, bearing down the belly towards the thighs, flushing out the gut, and then lifting and opening the heart. So we're opening up the ribs for better digestion and elimination. When you're ready, big inhale. And now exhale, drop the chin. Relax your upper body, let the spine round. Let it round a little bit, just a gentle rounding. So notice if there's any forceful curve in the spine, we want this to be a very soft curve in the upper back, just so we get the muscles to slide over the spine and the vertebra. That sliding action is what can help with, um, with moving this healthy joint fluid around. Let's exhale from the throat. 
Try at least two more heavy exhales. Really throw that breath out from the body. Still pushing through the heels. Let's walk the hands up. Inhale the arms straight up and overhead. Exhale, bring this into a gentle twist over to the right side of your body. So we're taking the left hand to the right thigh. Lower that right hand down, maybe just by your hip to the floor or lean back a little bit into that supporting right hand. Notice your shoulders. Let's press the shoulders away from the ears. Pull the shoulders down towards the hips and again, lengthen through the crown of the head. Inhale mostly into the upper right lung. Big inhale. As you inhale into that upper right lung, pull that right shoulder back a little more. Start guiding the body into the twist with the breath. Twisting with the inhale rather than the exhale. Inhale into the upper right lung. And then exhale, there'll be a little bit of a little pull back of the muscles when we exhale. Inhale, gentle twist. Exhale, gentle retraction. The muscles are just kind of like a pie crust. When you inhale, you're rolling that energy out. And when you exhale, it's almost like when you're rolling out pie crust or dough, that energy just kind of bounces back. So it's gonna be effort to keep that stretch. Let's inhale one more. <clears throat> and then exhale. From here, slowly bring it through center. Neutral spine, push through the heels, gentle bend in the knee. Inhale, arms overhead. Neutral position. Exhale, twist to the left. Right arm down, left hand by the hip or out behind us a little bit. Let's turn towards the left, maybe even looking over the left shoulder. And again, the twist moves with the inhale. Inhaling into that upper left lung. And then exhale, we feel a little bit of a bounce back. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, neutral. One more, big breath in. And then exhale. Let's walk the hands around, inhaling arms overhead. <clears throat> Exhale, swan dive, hands walk down the legs. Let's take a little bit of time to neutralize the spine, relax the head and the neck. Breathe into the low back, middle back, upper back. Breathe into the sides of the body as well here. While we're in this position, the breath has full access to both sides of the lungs. One more easy breath here, sides of the spine, sides of the lungs. When you're ready, exhale, soften the body, slowly be begin to come up to seated. And it's just a, just a gentle seated position. Let's swing our feet around to one side keeping our props close by. We might wanna use them in a moment. Let's come around to all fours, moving into our traditional cat and cow flow, dropping the belly, hinging the hips back, inhale, lengthening out through the spine. Exhale, pull the hips in, draw the belly up and round the spine for cat. Inhale into cow, stretching the front of the lungs, Exhale into cat, stretching the backs of the lungs. Now, this is a very traditional way to do cat and cow. Inhaling into cow, exhaling into cat, very traditional. However, you can always experiment with it. So maybe let's hold it in cat pose and try inhaling in cat pose, noticing how that feels in the, in the spine or in the back of your body. And now exhale, drop the body, release the breath and look 
forward. So let's reverse that. Let's do the opposite. Inhaling, rounding the spine. Inhaling, holding cat. And then exhale, release the breath and come into cow pose. Let's try two more like that. Inhale, cat. Holding at the top of the breath. Opening the back of the heart just a little more with your breath. And then exhale, release. Inhale, cat, last one. Hold it at the top of the breath. Inhale, just a little more. And now release. From here, let's slowly find neutral spine. Looking towards our hands or towards the top of our mat. Let's take one foot forward and then the other to find a standing forward fold. And let your head hang nice and loose in the forward fold. You could put the hands on the shins or the upper legs, avoiding the knees, maybe even let those hips sway. So now we are in a full standing weight bearing position and we just wanna be sure that we loosen the muscles in the hips before we come all the way up. When you're ready, go ahead and come all the way up into standing. From standing nice and tall, bring the arms up and overhead, reaching the fingertips towards the sky. Let's stand with our feet at hips width distance. Reaching up, look up, stretching the muscles in the neck. When you're ready, exhale, lower the hands down and lower the chin down also. Let's look down towards the floor. Inhale, bringing the arms up and overhead. Option to bend those elbows, fingertips towards the head or stretch high. Exhale, slowly lower down and look down. Let's move the chin, the head and the neck with the arms so that we're getting some gentle stretch along the front and the back of the spine in the neck region. One more, inhale. And exhale. Let's take just the left hand up over the head. Just the left hand. Big inhale. And if you want, bend that elbow. You could always pull up with the elbow. Sometimes this actually is better for us. So if we ever feel like we get a little stitch in the side, or maybe your digestion has been slow, in those cases, bend that arm, pull up with the elbow, and you may notice that you get a bigger stretch when you don't have a straight arm. From here, let's reach down with the opposite arm. So the right arm reaches down, left arm or elbow reaches up. You can look up, straight ahead, or over that right shoulder. Let's experiment with the three positions and notice where does the body choose to be? Apart from what we think is right for us, what is the body choosing today? Look up, look ahead, look down, move towards comfort. One more big inhale, push down into your left foot, inhale, and now exhale, come through center and lower that arm. So take a moment and be still, roll the shoulders back, open the palms, maybe even close the eyes and notice if you feel different in the body from left to right. Having gone through that big stretch, that big movement on the left, big contraction on the right, do we notice that it feels different without judging it as good or bad, better or worse? Just notice any different sensations. And if you don't notice anything, that is still a legitimate form of noticing. If there's no difference, noticing no difference. When you're ready, coming from that place with no judgment of what the body is experiencing, let's inhale the right arm, take it up. And again, we may want to bend that elbow. We may find that it is a better more gratifying stretch when we bend the elbow. Pull 
up from that right elbow, opening the right side of your body, opening up the liver. If you experience a little wave of heat, that is very common with these movements. They are meant to stimulate energy channels that help us to release anger or to release more iron into the bloodstream, which naturally can give us more energy. So if you feel a little rush of heat, whether here or there, that is natural in this. Let's push down into both feet, reach with the left hand, press into your right foot as you lift through that right side of the body and take a big breath into the upper right lung. Experiment with the head position, looking up, looking ahead, looking down. I don't like to say one position is harder than another. I will say looking up is going against gravity. It's going against sort of the natural flow of energy for the body. And it's okay to go against that. It's okay to maybe enjoy the sensation of work in the body. You could look ahead, just a little less effort maybe. And then if we look down again, I don't want to say it's easier, but it does move in a more natural way with the body and with gravity. Sometimes you need to just go with the flow. <laughs> Sometimes you need to initiate effort to get things done. So again, it's not easier or harder. Let your body choose. Experiment with the three. What feels right for the body in this breath? And you can change your mind at any time. You can change the position. Push into that right foot. One more big inhale. And now exhale. Good. Let's hold it in place. Palms out, shoulders back. Maybe close the eyes. You can always step the feet out a little wider. And again, noticing any subtle sensations, any differences from left to right. Is there a difference at all? Just noticing without judgment. from this place without judgment of the body, with pure awareness. Let's step the feet out, maybe about as wide as our mat. You might even step it over the width of your mat. I have both my toes forward. I think my feet might be a little challenging to see with the color of the carpet, but I do have both my feet forward, toes forward. So if you were to line this up with the edges of your mat, the edges of the feet, inner edges and outer edges are parallel with the mat. Let's take just the left leg, lift the toes and turn the toes out. So now we have our right toes forward and our left toes out. The feet are perpendicular. Let's bend that left knee. Extend the arms out, lengthen with palms down, and look over the left fingertips. Mighty warrior one. Inhale in through the nose. Exhale from the throat. Two more. Let's turn the left palm up, bring the right hand to your low back. You can bend that elbow, which just helps to protect that shoulder joint. From here, bending that left elbow a little bit, reach straight up to the sky and keep bending that left knee. This is our reversed warrior, reverse warrior. Inhaling into that upper left lung. Big breath in. Again, at any time, you could bend the arm and move from the elbow. The body has already practiced this. This position helps us to isolate the energy in the gut and intestines even more. So keep 
bending that left knee, push back into your right foot. Inhale into the upper left lung, big breath. Now straighten the left leg, release the right arm as if you're trying to reach down towards your right foot and keep reaching straight up with that left hand. This is our reversed triangle. One or two more breaths here, big inhale. When you're ready, exhale side angle, bending the left knee, left elbow or hand on the left thigh, taking that right arm straight up towards the sky or turn the palm over and reach the arm overhead. Press back into your outer right foot and keep lunging forward while pressing back. We're reaching out of that right armpit. Big inhale. Exhale from the throat. If there's any tension in the hips, if there's anything preventing the hips from releasing by way of the low back, open the throat. Make a sound with the breath. The more we relax the jaw, the more of potential there is to release tension in your back and your hips. Let's come up to warrior one, warrior two, Warrior two, right here. Bring the hands to the hips. Let's turn that left toe forward. And right toe is gonna lift and pivot out. They call this a dancing warrior where you pivot on the feet and do these different movements. So we're gonna have that right knee bent now. Left toes are straight ahead and right toes are out, feet perpendicular extending out through our fingertips into our mighty warrior two expression, looking beyond the fingertips, looking to the right. Keep bending that right knee. Let's turn the right palm up, little bend in the elbow, left knuckles to the low back. Think about anchoring down into that right foot and try not to move that right knee. So really think about the right knee. And when you're ready, inhale, slowly lift the right arm and don't move that right leg. One of the most common things that the body will do is the right leg will go straight, especially if there's tightness in the trunk of your body or if there's tightness around the liver. So we wanna keep that right knee bent and then isolate that stretch. Now, again, if there's any pain, bend the elbow or maybe straighten the leg a little bit so that we do allow the body to move towards comfort. But we do wanna initiate a little bit of effort, just a little bit. Breathing into that upper right lung, reach on the inhale. When you're ready, let's straighten that right leg Reach down with the left arm. This will create a bigger side bend on the left side. Keep reaching up, reverse triangle. Change the position of your head at any time. The body practiced looking up. How does it feel? Looking straight ahead and then looking back. Where does the body want to go? One more big inhale. Exhaling side angle pose, bending that right knee again, right elbow or hand to the thigh, left arm straight up, push that left hip back, press down into the left foot and keep lunging into that right leg, straight down into the earth. You can always turn your hand, turn your palm and bring that left arm over your head if it's comfortable. Let's breathe into the upper left lung under the armpit. And then exhale. Push into the left foot and pull up through that left shoulder on the inhale. Big inhale. So you're opening through the waist and exhale. One more big breath. When you're ready, let's come up. Warrior two, reach through the fingertips. 
Bring both hands to the hips, turn that right toe forward, maybe inch the feet closer together. So feet are only going to be a little wider than the natural hip for this next movement. From here with the feet just a little wider than your natural hip, push the hips back and gently bend the knees. Keeping the hips pressed back, knees bent, you're going to gently sit the hips back and then slowly lower the hands towards the floor. Hang the head loose, shake the head yes, and turn it left and right. Practice three big ha breaths here, and we may or may not have that ha sound. Maybe you're exhaling as if you're going to fall the mirror. You can do sound, heat, or both. Let's try it together. Big inhale. Ah. One more. When you're ready, walk the hands up. From standing, let the body sway a little bit, maybe even shake out the legs. <clears throat> From here, if you want, grab a sip of water. We're moving into our standing balancing postures from here. We did work with some hip rotation today. We also did the hip rotation when we were standing. We did it with some pivots. If your hips get a little sore later in the day today or tomorrow, just know that we did do a heavy workout deep in the hips. So um, check in with your body and be sure you take care of yourself. Our balancing pose today does have a little bit of hip rotation as well with stabilization. So how to keep the hips mobile and strong at the same time. Let's work on that. So from wherever you are, I'm going to bring my chair into the practice. There's a lot of poses that you might be able to do without a prop, but adding the prop in anyway can create such a really great element of security in your practice. And you might find that you get more muscles that engage when the body feels secure, when we don't have that, that psychological um, interference or that fear of falling in the practice all of a sudden you have different muscles that jump in that want to be part of your little yoga party. So grab a prop. If you have something nearby, I highly recommend it. From here, let's start standing, lifting one leg. And I'm lifting the outside leg, keeping my inside standing leg on my prop. Let's turn that outside leg out. And you can place the heel below the knee or above the knee. You can hold it here or take the leg across. So maybe you cross that ankle below or above your knee. You're always welcome to reach down and give the body just a little bit of a boost. If you lean down to give that little bit of assistance, come back up, reposition your hips to neutral and reposition the spine to neutral. From here, let's slowly lift that outside arm. So whatever leg is crossed, take that same arm and lift it up. Now the stretch we're focusing on, it's happening in a few different places, this stretch. It's from the open hip up to your shoulder. And we're also stretching diagonal from the opposite hip across to the shoulder. So maybe let's just find the breath in those places. Breathe down, a clean straight line down to the open hip, up to that open armpit, and then exhale. Now try finding the breath diagonal. So breathe into the standing hip through your navel, and now up to the armpit, breathing across the body. 
and then relax. Let's try that two more times. Inhale, up the side body. Inhale, diagonal across the body. You might even be able to close your eyes. Hold on to that prop. Last time through, inhale, side body. And now inhale across the body. When you're ready, relax your arm, relax both legs, shake out the knees. All right, let's move around so that we're able to do the other side. So take note, does it feel different from left to right? I usually notice a big difference from left to right after we do those movements. But again, if you're not noticing a change, that's also you know, something that could be very common as well. Let's step into that supporting leg, our pillar of support. Let's hold on to our prop. Let's lift the outside leg. And my foot is flat. My foot is flat. I'm pushing through the heel. So from here, opening from the hip, Placing that heel maybe on the inside of the leg, somewhere away from the kneecap. This weight-bearing position puts the kneecap in a little bit of a vulnerable place, so we don't want to put pressure into that kneecap. Keep the foot low or bring it up high. Cross it over if that feels right for you. And again, if you're given a little boost, Come back up, check in with your posture, stand nice and tall. We're keeping that foot flexed to stabilize the kneecap. Any twisting in the hip can cause energy to twist your knee. So keep that foot flexed. That way this stretch isolates the knee joint. Let's take that same arm up, reach to the sky, Breathe along that open side lung, straight up into that open lung. Exhale. Now breathe diagonal in the stretch from the standing hip through the belly up to the rib. And then exhale down and across. Let's try two more. One more time, big breath in, and then exhale, release. Step the feet to the floor, notice any differences, notice if the body was working, any tingling. Sometimes having that arm extended overhead too, you can almost feel like the blood rushing and circulating a little more. So let's go ahead and come down onto the floor and get ready for final meditation and final relaxation. Go ahead and get comfortable. I do recommend a chair, an ottoman, or something that you could maybe use to get your feet up, getting the ankles just even just a little bit higher than your heart has the potential to really improve circulation throughout the whole body. And this is um, energetically in yoga, you know, we can make no medical claims for this, but energetically we use ankles higher than the heart to balance blood pressure, to help with lymphatic drainage. Um, also even just to help with overall health and vitality, improving prana, the life force in the body. So, um, take a moment and maybe experiment with a few different things that you might be able to use to put your legs up. I do like using a chair, but sometimes it's too much. It can feel too high, almost uncomfortable. So it is enough if you just want to put a couple pillows under your feet. And then, um, you know, it's nice and cushy under your heels and ankles too. So take a moment, get comfortable. Maybe grab a blanket. It's common for the body to get a little chill whenever the relaxation response kicks in. Whenever we are still, it's common to just get a little bit cool. Now, as we're getting settled, go ahead and bring awareness to the physical body. So notice any parts of the body that may still need to twitch or work out any energy. You might want to 
Start by spreading out your fingers from wherever you are. Just let the fingers go out. Take a big breath in, stretch out your fingers, and then exhale, relax. And now maybe make a fist. Take a big breath in. Hold that really, really, really tight. And when you're ready, exhale and let that go. Now let's bring awareness to the feet. Stretch out your toes. Even imagine the arches of the feet spreading out, taking a big breath with your feet open, toes spread like a duck. And when you're ready, exhale, relax the feet. Now curl the toes in, crunch up the toes. Maybe even feel the energy pulling up to your knees and tightening in your hips. Take a big breath in with the feet, the knees, the hips, all very tight. And when you're ready on the exhale, release that. Now let's try both, let's try both. And notice what feels right for you. So let's start with the tension expansion technique. Open the hands and open the feet, stretch the body out in any dynamic way from where you are and take in a big breath while you're stretched out. And hold it there for as long as it feels right. Feel the shoulders unlocking, feel the legs, the hips, the back, even the spine is lengthening and energy is opening. When you're ready, exhale, everything is just gonna pull in a little bit. Now let's try the opposite. Maybe pull your elbows in, maybe tighten up your knees, make fist with the hands, curl the toes down, scratch up the muscles in your face even. Imagine you can pull the insides of your ears into your brain and your eyeballs and eyebrows draw back with a lot of tension, everything tense, big inhale, hold it there. Hold it for as long as it feels right for you. Remember, there's no one forcing this practice on the body. When you are ready, let it go. Now just be at ease. Let the body work out any little kinks, any jittery energy. We're just gonna let it be. Let's just think about the breath. Think about when you inhale in through your nose as much as possible. And if you're inhaling through the mouth, still think about the nose. So as you inhale through the nose or the mouth, Think about the sensations in your left nostril, just the left. And when you exhale, think about the right. Let's try this three more times. And if your mind wanders, remind yourself what your assignment is. You're giving the brain an assignment. This is called dharana. It means to meditate with effort to train the brain to stay focused. Noticing when you have lost focus is the first step in becoming a better meditator. So inhale, think about the left nostril. Exhale, think about the right nostril. Notice any sensations. Notice anything at all. Inhale left. Exhale right. One more, inhale left, exhale right. Now we're gonna switch it up just a little bit. Inhale left, exhale right. Now inhale right, exhale left. Try that a couple more times. Inhale right, exhale left. Maybe your body is already noticing a preference or more awareness with one energy channel versus the other. We have the opportunity to switch it up one more time as we round out our time together in meditation. Let's do alternate nostril breathing only through awareness. So inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left. Switch again, inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left. Now continue with that pattern of alternating the breath. And again, we're not touching the body, we're not moving a muscle, 
We're simply being aware through the art of observation, becoming more aware of the sensations in our body as we shift with that breath. Let's try that for just one more quiet minute. Breathe in through both nostrils, awareness of the breath in both sides of the body. And even with awareness in both sides, we may notice subtle differences in those energy channels. Maybe there is just a little bit more of a sensation of openness on one side, or maybe we're sensing just a little bit of restriction on the other. That is very common, just respective of the anatomy of the nose, there might be some differences. From wherever you are, you might wanna place the hands over your chest as we close our session together today. I wish you a beautiful and peaceful day, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again in our Yoga for Everybody session. Namaste, everybody. Have a peaceful day.